Hey everyone, this is Chris. And this is Steve. And you're listening to slash watching One Cross Radio. And today we are rejoined by soon to be father Steve. Steve, how you doing? <laughs> yep, Father Steve. That's what you can call me. Oh my gosh. I'm no longer a Baptist. I'm no. <laughs> Just kidding. It, you should make that joke on a Sunday morning. See how much it'll fly. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so today we are talking about Captain Marvel, but before we do, I just want to point out this awesome, t- uh, I almost said t-shirt, this awesome hoodie that I am wearing that I got from HeroWares.com. Not a sponsor, just love the product. Does this have eye holes? No, it doesn't. No, it's, yeah, lame. it's not one of those. Um, not a sponsor, but hey, HeroWares, if you see this and you want to, let's do it. Uh, but, I got this, this t-shirt from my mother-in-law for Christmas. Oh, also, nice. Also not a sponsor. No, no, not a sponsor. Although, uh, mother-in-law of Steve, if you want to be, let's, let's work something out. <laughs> Your dog is licking my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Luna is, uh, dear listener and viewer, Luna is out and about. Um, I legit just got home from work. Oh, she's <laughs> making an on-screen appearance. <laughs> uh, like, I just got home from a uh, morning of staff meetings, uh, like, f- half an hour before you got here. You're going to go to headlock. And I just took Luna around, so she's hype. She's hype. Uh, but, Steve, I know you got to go soon, so we got to be respectful of your time, because uh, it's been a meetings-heavy day for you, hasn't it? Uh, it's tax season. I met with my friend Joe, who does my taxes. Joe, he'll do your taxes for a reasonable fee. Also not a sponsor. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> and if you want to be, let's work something out. <laughs> Not that we're desperate for sponsors. Uh, oh my god! Just gosh. the running joke every time we do something. Every single time. On a side note, viscous uh, listener, you can't see it, but Luna just dropped a ball in my lap. She is demanding attention, so uh, you will hear stuff happening. Sorry, Steve. Uh, so let's dive right in. Um, what did you think of Captain Marvel? Yeah, I liked it. I, I uh, you know, not my favorite one ever, 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 but I, I enjoyed it. It uh, held my attention. It made me laugh. It surprised me. Uh, I wasn't like I think as, as much as I wanted to like Captain or not Captain Black Panther, the one that everyone really liked recently. Uh, I just did. I could see the twist coming a mile away. Yeah. Whereas this one, I didn't expect what happened in that to happen. So, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was I was caught off guard all the way through. Well, like. I, I know the, the Kree aren't as good as they come out to be, but I didn't expect the Skrulls to be the good guys. Yeah, I did not like that. Yeah. I did not like that twist. Um, so, uh, but did it surprise you? No. Well, yeah, it, surpri- it surprised me, but that's all, not... That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. It, that, that's fair. It wasn't like a Last Jedi situation where it's like it kept going left when you expected it to go right, mm-hmm. but it's just not a twist I enjoyed. Um like I feel like I'm gonna come across really negative on the movie, but that being like that being said, I I did like it, but I'd probably give it a th- I'd give it a three out of five, um, and I definitely think in that movie there was a four out of five, if not more. Okay. But the uh, I don't want to just be negative, but well, well. Yeah, starting from the beginning, I thought the opening Marvel Studios Stanley. Oh, Teddy that was excellent. Was awesome. I got a little teary. Yeah, that w- that was great, and I loved the the cameo they worked in. Yeah, uh, I thought I don't know if they could do this with him, but it'd be great if they could do the age age uh, de aging de aging technology on him because well, he obviously was not that old when he did Mallrats. But no, no, he wasn't. And they, I think they somehow got audio from Mallrats from when he said that line, uh, and Kevin Smith like. Released a video, uh, like first a photo, and he was like a blubbering mess. Yeah. Um, and then a video, like just going into how Hart felt it was and how much it meant to him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh man, good for you. Like, uh, like I'm happy for the guy. Uh, and it would be really cool, especially when you've done work around comics and you knew Stan like he did. Well, and it was so grounded in the time frame, right? Like '95 is sort of well, what yeah, that came that's out. The, and... That's the yeah '95. Was, yeah, Mallrats did come out in '95. And it's like not not it's not Kevin Smith's best best movie by any means, but it's still cool. I don't think Kevin Smith has a best movie. <laughs> I'll disagree, but I'll disagree, but uh, yeah, it's the the start off was great. Um, most of the performances were really really solid. Yeah, uh, Brie Larson, I, I liked her performance a lot. And that actually ties into something negative about the movie, but that it's not on her. It's for me. It's on the directing and the writing. Sure. Um, so we'll get to that. Ben's Mendelssohn uh, was excellent. He's, like, awesome. he's always excellent. Yeah, he's like, great. He he seems to always play the bad guy. Like not this time. Well, you find out partway through. 
Um, and a slightly scene chewing, but in the good way. Like mm-hmm. it's he. Oh yeah. man! I so think he fun. and he and uh, Sam ja- Sam Jackson kind of carried the performances and acting. Yeah, it yeah. was great. Uh, <clears throat> I think. Yeah, well, trying not to jump to it. Uh, special effects were were solid. Yeah, like I I feel like Coulson, you could sort of like that. Think, yes, he didn't look as good, but Sam no. Jackson, you just kind of forgot what you were looking at. at no, one point. My, like, my, my jokes at point have been like I don't even think Sam Jackson looked that young as they aged the aged him, but it looked like a person. Mm-hmm. Um, Coulson, there was a couple times the time where I'm like, ooh, ooh, that's sticking out. Um, especially when he was when it was regular Coulson figuring out that Coulson in the car was a scroll. Mm-hmm. It was just there was a couple seconds where you're just like, ooh, yeah. It could have been touched up slightly better here, but on the whole, it was like really, really the de aging was done really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. See, here's the thing. I feel, I've got so much to say on the. The issues, but that's not to say it's a bad movie. Sure. Well, I think like I really enjoyed. Uh, it kind of felt like not as off the wall as this, but almost felt like watching Men in Black. Huh. Like it was just sort of like huh. a buddy cop, fish out of water, uh, space weird sci-fi humor thing. That's fair. Yeah. And like with with uh, you know. I knew that something was like goose was some kind of alien. That cat, yeah, that did not like. I did not expect that when that happened. That that felt like right out of Men in Black when that. Well, when oh, that, the, the tentacle, the tentacle thing, yeah, yeah. yeah, which I guess happens in the comics, but I just wasn't expecting that, and it, <laughs> it made me laugh. That, uh, that yeah, no, uh, Caleb and I were uh, were talking about that on the way to meeting up with you guys last night. We met up last night. We, we did, night. we did. Although by the time you see this, it'll be. A week before. Anyways, uh, <laughs> because we're just blowing away the illusion that this is live. Um, yeah, we, uh, there's all, at times always like an alien where there's a joke. So I saw, I'm like, okay, there's going to be something with this cat. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to, but I didn't necessarily see it being that. Yeah, yeah. So I was That's like, oh, okay, it didn't, it didn't, like, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. And then at, the first time it happened, I was like, oh, oh, dang. All yeah. right. Um, I just loved Sam Jackson's like relationship with the cat all the yeah. way through, and then so spoilers. Obviously, hopefully you understand this is a spoilers uh, thing. It, yeah. But when when Goose scratches his eye off or out or scratches it in a way that destroys it. Yeah. Do you remember the reference that he made to losing his eye in the Winter Soldier? Have you seen any of these things on the internet? Even the, what was the reference? He, he's told uh, Captain America's. Challenging him to trust people. Oh yeah, and he says the last person, last time I trusted somebody, I lost an eye. Oh, <laughs> and the whole yeah. through this movie, he's like, "Oh, I love you. You're such a right, good guy." And then he right. loses his eye. That was kind of funny. I I just didn't like that. I it was something I I had, I figured was coming. Yeah, and I had heard was coming, and then when it happened, I'm like, "Oh man," I don't know. I was kind of hoping it would more so be like left the mystery it's one of those things you don't sure. need explained yeah um and i get it like some people really enjoyed it they they found it funny it's just something that didn't yeah. connect with me as much um it's but yeah it, it was goofy with him loving the cat like mm-hmm. loving on this cat so yeah. much where you're like yeah what i i also i enjoyed just that 90s nostalgia of she's in blockbuster and just seeing those shelves the vhs is on them again <laughs> like hook in the background and you know, like it was, it was just kind of like, oh yeah, and yeah. then and then she's on Alta Vista trying to do the search engine, and then like the computer takes forever to load. Like all that stuff was fun. Like that's, you know, if you grew up <laughs> if you grew up in those those nineties, you remember yeah. what that stuff was like. I ah, man, and I feel like I'm coming off as such a negative Nathan. At points, I liked it, the nineties references, but then other times, I'm like, eh, all right. It, it wasn't as organic for me, but uh. I, I did appreciate some of the stuff, uh, and then. It, like even though it would have been more of just like throwing a '90s references for '90s references' sake, if there was something for Pogs or Crazy Bones, I would have been like, "Yeah," which would have been defeating my own point. But I don't care; it would have been awesome. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Enough. No, I'll, I'll recognize that that's slightly hypocritical. Yeah. But it like I, I enjoyed the '90s piece a little bit, um, but I found it didn't like Ragnarok really had like a bit of an '80s vibe to it. Sure. Or uh, Guardians one and two both musically had like. A, well, I thought the music for this one was pretty good too. The '90s music, you know. Yeah, I I just found with those movies it, it was a lot more organic to the movie, sure. or less on the note. Like there was one scene in particular. Spoilers, 
uh, when she gets to the huge, uh, huge space battle, and then no doubts, yeah. I'm just a girl. Yeah, comes that was on. that was a little, like, it, it was a little was, too on the nose. It was for a me, it was a girl power movie, right? It was, like yeah. it really was, and that's fine. Like I think that's you know, I've got nothing wrong with nothing wrong with girl power, but. Wonder Woman didn't pull that bus that Yeah, but Wonder Woman out. didn't do it as well as... I thought Wonder Woman wasn't nearly as good of a movie as Captain Marvel. Ooh. Like, Wonder Woman... Ooh. Wonder Woman, the whole third act sucked. Th- it didn't make any sense. I'll, g- I'll give you the third act, yeah. but I, I have more issues with Captain Marvel than I did Wonder Woman. Okay. I just I just thought Which that... Is- I just thought... So, here's, here's... Like, I don't like it when a movie sets a bunch of stuff up and then can't follow through on yeah, it. Yeah, that's fair. And that's I don't fair. like it when a movie is bloated because it's trying to make connections rather than just tell its own story, right? So, like, my three of my least favorite... Uh, my, so my four least favorite are... Um, my least favorite of all is Iron Man 2. Yeah, uh, um, that's fair. I, I just felt like they didn't tell a story. They were just trying to, like, hey, let's set up the Avengers at that point. Thor, the original Thor, uh, was also yeah. a similar idea to that. And Age of Ultron does a lot of that, too. Yeah. My, my least favorite is Guardians 2 for other reasons. But, yeah, that's um, fair. like, I felt like this movie had so much potential to do that because it was like, let's go back and plug a hole. And and there was some stuff like the, oh, her name is the Avengers, so we're going to name the Avengers after her. Oh, like, man. that was, whatever. I don't really care. I, well, I just, it yeah. just, it wasn't like the movie felt bloated and directionless because of that, like it could have been or was in the past with these movies. My, my reaction to that isn't like, I hated that, which I, I was about... It's more so. It was just one of those like, oh, it, it wasn't something that needed an explanation. Yeah. Well, and and I mean, I, part of it I think is gonna, we're going to see, and we, and we got the post credit scene uh, with her meeting up with the Avengers for yeah. the first time, like to see what that relationship's going to look like uh, <laughs> in, in in Endgame and ongoing is going to sort of help maybe shape how we feel about some of these things. Um, particularly, like we've we've also seen it in the trailer, the third trailer for Endgame has some of that stuff in it too. Yeah, um, which. That reaction, like, so when I saw Captain Marvel with Jill, that might have had the best audible reaction to a post credit scene since Thanos showing up in the post credits for Avengers. Like, the person right in front of us, like, when Captain Marvel suddenly showed up in it, was like, oh my gosh! <laughs> like, audible gasp and everything, and Jill and I are just trying not to crack up. But well, she didn't realize that was going to happen? Somehow she didn't realize, so it was just... I like those moments where it's like an audible like gotcha like in that good way where somehow people didn't see it coming because yeah. with Jill and I and with you and I most of the time you can see this stuff coming mm-hmm. um, and to give the film credit like it it did it could have been so much worse in buckling under the weight of yeah. everything going on than it was because part of like part of my issues with the movie is it did have too much going on where it's like it's an amnesia movie but it's also a tie to marvel's past while being an origin story Mm -hmm. while setting up endgame Mm -hmm. like it it didn't perfectly balance all those things but it did a better job than other movies that have a lot going on i don't think it was to give it credit i don't think it was a perfect movie at all i just think that uh i was i enjoyed it like it was it was like i I just love i enjoy these movies and if they're not uh i don't need them to be I don't need all of them to be Avengers Infinity no, War or or Captain America Winter Soldier, which, yeah. you know, like, it's like, oh, that was fun. I, yeah. It didn't fall apart under the weight of itself, and I enjoyed that. Like, okay, I think Brie Larson did a better job in Community as Rachel, the <laughs> the, the funny uh, coat check girl who ended up dating yeah. Abed. Um, but well, she was, she was and it, it's, still fun. Yeah, no, and that's a, so, yeah, the, the, the frustration I had with Larson was not actually with Larson herself. Mm-hmm. Um, it was more so with the, the pacing of the movie. I found the movie the movie's pacing was really weird because until that final like five minutes, I found it never really got out of second gear. Mm-hmm. And yet, the way they had the characters reacting to the story was as if they were within fifth gear. Because it was very much like something big would happen and it's like, okay, next. Explain what you mean by this. So, to give the the prime example of it is, Larson finds out that she's been lied to for the past six years. Yeah. And they touch on it briefly for two minutes. Okay. Like, that should be, for any character, a freak out moment. Like, you, like there needs to be an emotional response to that. There wasn't. Hmm. They didn't allow for there to be. And she could have acted the crap out of that scene. Like, she could have 
like crushed it. And very much so with the movie, I found like, okay, here's these revelations, but you just like, okay, we move forward. Mm -hmm. You're not actually given a chance for there to be any breathing on it. Like the betrayal of Jude Law, which I saw coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you know anything about the characters, you know Jan Rog's not a good guy. And there's but even that, some it was some, even that, yeah. I, which I know less about him. Yeah. Like it was something you could see structurally coming from the beginning. Sure, sure. So then I'm like, okay, even though I know there's it, this is coming, like there, there sh- should be some good payoff. There should be some good scenes with this. But there wasn't. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of, all right, ne- next. And then it, the only thing is, like, you just found out the. It's like, but I'm going to help you guys. Yeah. They didn't really give any emotional... Yeah, I think part of it... ...to a lot of it, and that's my biggest beef with the movie. I, I think part of it probably that plays into a few things. One of them is that it was an, a movie that was trying to do a lot of things. So yeah. that's part of it. The other the other part of it is she was brainwashed, right? So you don't expect like a fully normal really, like response out of that. But I think the but biggest... The, something. Yeah, I guess so. I think the biggest thing in it was they seem to be more interested in... Uh, doing the whole girl power thing than making a movie that the beats make sense for it, right? Like, so the, the whole third, last little bit of the, the movie, uh, you're expecting this huge fight between her and Yon Rog, and she's like, I got nothing to prove to you. It's fine. Yeah, which, and like, and, and that, that, was the, that was the point they were trying to make. That's fine, but it yeah. also kind of maybe shortchanged that relationship a little bit. But speaking as a guy, maybe that's, that's something well, that was important as a woman. But the other thing, the part that I think the biggest beef that I had with the whole movie is like I don't I don't really get into these conversations about oh she's such an OP Mary Sue character or whatever like I had no problem with Ray I had no problem with Wonder Woman I felt like that last scene where she's taking out the uh, accusers ships was, was visually was, stunning it was that, great that yeah was awesome. it just made like she just literally blew up eight bombs that were supposed to raise earth yeah. and was unscathed and then took out two ships that if you remember Guardians of the Galaxy the entire Nova Corps, the Guardians, and the Reavers couldn't take out one, and she took out two in three yeah. seconds. Like, like there needs to be even even in like Infinity War when when Thor shows up and he's fighting the the he takes a star to the face. Yeah, but like, they're still like he's almost dead. Yeah, and, and then he shows up and he's defeating those uh, dog things, whatever they're called, uh, Thanos' army. I even that's like that was pretty cool, but okay, like it's kind of a cheat. I feel like they made him a little like whatever. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like there's no limit on all those scenes with, with Carol's power. And they never called her Captain Marvel, by the way. No, no, uh, they didn't. But, like, I, I just kind of want to know, like, what are the limitations on her power? Is, is this just going to be she's unstoppable? Or how is this going to work out? Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So, like, I, the, the actual tale and fight, I had no problem with her being like, I have nothing to prove to you. Yeah, yeah. Because that's your girl power moment. But... Not to be like everything must be compared to Wonder Woman, but Wonder Woman, even in its third act, yeah. it had that whole emotional thing for her where it's like, no, I did this. Like, there there was a weight to it. Mm-hmm. And it's not something I expect to happen to a female character. I would expect any character, male or female or alien, who's just found out they've been lied to and brainwashed for the past six years, past yeah. six years to have some reaction. Like, to... Sure. And for me, that's a disservice. A disservice yeah. to the character, a disservice to a performer who could quite frankly like knock that out of yeah. the park. And I think I think anytime you tell a story, anytime you make a movie in particular, there's going to be priorities in the storytelling yeah. that you want to show, right? And and their priority, uh, besides setting up and filling in some gaps, yeah. their priority was to show the struggle. That her, primary, her primary struggle wasn't against the Kree, it wasn't against the Skrull. It was, in my perspective as a guy, her, her primary struggle was against the expectations that are set against her as a woman. Right. Right? Like, she she overcame those things, showed that she's powerful, remembered that she was powerful, and uh, had nothing to prove to anybody. And I think that was the point. And, and maybe, again, like, I'm I'm not coming into this as a woman, right? No, so no. I, I exa- missed some of that, I think. But I think that's what they were going for. And that's something, like, and it's... The fallout of this one has been very interesting for me. Yeah. Uh, just because... As I, like, we can touch on that or not, but, like, uh, Screen Screen Junkies did a great spoiler review of this. Okay. Because I found they addressed a lot of the structural issues that I had with the movie. So in that, uh, I was like, okay, that's validating. 
Uh, and they did it in a way where it's not looking at the politics that get applied to this movie sure. in some way, in, in some avenue, avenues necessarily, and to me, a lot of avenues unnecessarily. Because I'm like, no, this, this is a movie. Uh-huh. Uh, it doesn't need to be a huge political thing. You can make it that. That's just not how... Anyways. But then, as I hear other people's point of view... I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to give this movie an. I, I do want to give this movie another shot. Yeah. I want to. I'm. I'm going to buy the the DVD Blu-ray. Yeah. Uh, but they don't do the combo backs anymore, which is stupid. Jerks. Oh, <laughs> um, they don't do that anymore. No, it's really annoying. Hmm. Uh, it's now either like the Blu-ray that has all the bonus features that I like, or just the DVD. It's not Blu-ray yeah, yeah. and DVD, uh, which is just dumb. I just go for the DVDs. I, know, I like the Blu-rays though, Fair um, but I would like. I'm hoping it, it. I'm hoping this gets future installments because there's all this. Yeah, specula- of course it's going to. Yeah. Well, there like through the political. There's all this speculation on like she's ruffled the feathers of the and whatever. But she made more money on her opening weekend than Wonder Woman did. Yeah, she's she's climbing the ranks in 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 terms of how much she's made. They're expecting a billion dollars internationally, which is nuts. Like which it's is, gonna it's gonna be a, a bankable movie, and they're it, gonna make is, another one, which is good. So, I, I yeah. hope I hope out of the second one though, I'd like to see some more stuff where it's like okay, we can do this in a girl power way while still like doing stuff where there's that like servicing the story, mm-hmm. and still like having that opportunity. I would like to see, as you said, like somewhere where the the idea on what's the cap on her powers, and also her realizing like I gotta rein this in a bit because if I punch a dude in the face, but I can fly through a ship, like I'm gonna liquidate somebody. Yeah, yeah. Like to give credit where it's due, the the DC animated show always had like Superman reining it in because Justice League or Justice League yeah. and his own cartoon. It yeah. was like we have to have. Like, part of it is we'll have Superman get beat up to establish how powerful this guy is. But every once in a while, he would give this speech, like, I always have to rein it in because, like... Yeah, Spider-Man used to do that in the comic books, too, like every once in a while. Like, people are paper. I could eviscerate them with, a, like, a flick. Yeah. Like, I want, I'd want, i like something like that. Yeah. Where it's like, I have all this incredible power. I, I have the power. Like, I can't just beat beat somebody up, like... Walk us through it. Like, are you holding back, or do you like hulk into it a bit? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Just something, just something. It'd be nice. So, what do you think of the reveal about Marvel? Uh, that was weird. Like, I'm not, I'm not a diehard Captain Marvel yeah, no, person. No. So, the, some of the twists and turns, I know some people took took issue with. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was different. It was very different, but to me, Marvel isn't a, a like huge character where it's like, well, you you might want to stick with the origin as was. So mm-hmm. it, it worked for the movie, um, but I, like I said, I don't have that vested interest where like it really bothered me. Yeah. But it's something I can see where I could be like, no, I can understand why that would that why that would bother you. Yeah. Same with the character of Monica Rambeau in this movie. She's she's the child. Of the best friend who looks up to Carol, but in the comics, Monica was Captain Marvel before, so I know... Which is strange. I don't think she was a character before Carol. No, they... So so when Carol... Like, when they invented the character of Carol, Carol, she was just an Air Force lieutenant or something that was in the background of an an issue of Captain... They came out within the same, like, three to five years. Okay. This was brought... It was in a video I watched. Sure. And she... But But, Carol was Miss Marvel for, like, the longest time. Right. Carol, what, like... Monica was Captain Marvel for uh, like five years or so. So here's here's what I understand of it. Though, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They they introduced her. She was just a background character. She gets caught in this explosion. A few years later, they're like, "Hey, what if that created a, a female version of Captain Marvel?" And so mm-hmm. they're like, "Because they did that. That every every male character had a female version. Right? Spider Man had Spider Woman. Yep. Hulk had She Hulk. So Captain Marvel had Miss Marvel. Yep. Uh, so the the origins fairly similar. The original Batwoman was like that. Yeah. Uh, and and. Uh, and so she was Miss Marvel, and she even dated Captain Marvel for a short little while. Yep. But she didn't... There wasn't another Captain Marvel until the end of the 70s when Captain Marvel died. He gets right. cancer. And this really great gra- original graphic novel written by Jim Starlin, uh, where it's the death of Captain Marvel. It's really, actually, really, really, really well written. Hold so on. So then it's- after that, then Monica Rambeau... Because she was Photon at one point. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Which yeah. is also the call sign for her mom on the side yeah. of the fighter jet. 
Uh, sorry, the only reason I'm saying hold up is... Uh, I have a friend who I work with who said they never brought Marvell back because he he had died of cancer and that was something the author wrote in like you'll never bring this character back. Mar- Marvell has come back, right? Not if, not really. Okay, they, okay. There was a um, All right, so there's dude, been alternate right? alternate versions of him. There was one that that oh look Marvell's back during Secret Invasion, but it really ended up being a scroll. Right. Um, but yeah, the character of Marvell, uh, the six one six. A real version of Captain Marvel has never come back. Okay, life. cool, yeah. cool. All right, so then, dude, you're right. Awesome. Uh, so the the yeah, I did not like the the twist with the scrolls. Um, I kind of felt like that is like that's a story I wouldn't mind, but down the line, because to me, if we are introducing the scrolls, like the the original part was their mo. They invade. They take over. They're bad. Uh, and I'd much like personally for me I'd rather if you're doing a story where it's like no we're good like that that could be a story for down the line where they've encountered the scrolls the scrolls have actually been infiltrating earth for a while mm-hmm. like and then it's like no we're just trying to find a home to me that's a story wrought with tension because you're like no you're all our experiences with this species yeah has been your evil we don't trust you so I, d- I just didn't care for that twist. That took me out a bit. Like, cool for trying something different. Yeah. But it's it's not something I enjoyed. I liked it. I, That's fair. I just, I, I like it when a movie can surprise me. Um, yeah. And again, I think the idea is the Skrulls are a whole race of beings, so there's probably bad ones too. And, you know, like in this one, they happen to be good. I feel I, like we're going to get to that, though, because that, yeah. well, the, the, the big MO. The part where... Where uh, Ben Mendelsohn's character Talos comes into the Rambo house with the, the you know the big slushy whatever, like, yeah. which is a reference to Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, I just like that whole scene was so great where he's just trying to talk him down. I just, I just really thought Ben Mendelsohn did a great job. Yeah, and, no, that like he was, uh, he was wonderful. But I mean, there's also some politicking in there too, right? The imperialistic nation and the yeah. refugees and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, whatever. Uh, which uh, for me, a po- points is like I'm fine with. I'm fine with political themes in a movie yeah. if I'm going for a political movie. Like, if I'm going to sit and watch JFK and it not be a political movie, yeah. I'll be like, what the heck did I just watch? Yeah. Or you can do a political thriller in tone like Winter Soldier mm-hmm. where that that made sense within that movie, but then sure. at times I'm like, I, this well, is not the movie to go with this with. But they... It didn't bother me. Which is fair. It, it wasn't a huge bother, but it was... Did you did you know going in that the the Tesseract was going to be in it? No, no. Which I mean, it makes sense. Tesseract, Cosmic Cube is a big part of Captain Marvel's history, but yeah, that completely threw me off. I d- that's something I also didn't fully care for. Uh, it's it, it like the, it's the difficulty when you go into prequel territory because the Tesseract is something they've shown outside of I think Loki in in uh, Infinity War actually just holding it. Like, it's something that nobody just holds because of how powerful it is. Captain Marvel holds it, apparently. I know, yeah. I know. So then, and yeah. then the, the cat thing just swallows it and coughs yeah. it up. Well, so in the comics, that, that character has, like, dimensions inside uh, yeah. of it. Yeah. I don't know. So, so but I, I had to think about this. Like, what's the history of the Tesseract? So, obviously, at some point, um, Odin had it. He hides it on Earth in that yeah. like, place that at the beginning of Captain America... Uh, he uh, the Red Skull comes in and takes it. Um, he loses it in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Then at the end of Captain America, uh, Howard, Howard Stark it. finds it. Well, he. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they, they, they're, they're looking for Captain. They're looking for Captain. They're looking for Captain America. And they find it. So obviously, in somewhere in there, Howard Stark gave it to Marvel. Yeah, and Project Pegasus, which is the underground base they had in, in, Mar- in Captain Marvel. Also, was the name of the project where they were studying it at the beginning of the Avengers. Yeah. So the connection there is probably Howard Stark and Marvel had started this process of studying it, yeah. not realizing that she was an alien. Yeah, and then it gets lost on her hidden space station, I guess, yeah. and then swallowed by Goose. And then you know, as you see in the final post-credit stinger, she he vomits it up on his desk, yeah. which is funny. Yeah, I thought. So no, then, no, wait, wait, it was. And then the next, and then it's in deep storage until. They give it to, uh, Selvig. yeah, Professor yeah. Selvig at the end of yeah. Thor. And then uh, is Captain America, maybe. So the other thing I both liked and didn't like mm-hmm. was uh, the use of characters from Guardians. Oh yeah, 
just because on one hand I'm like cool they're here then on the other hand they they did nothing like it, it was just it was it was just there for the sake of it yeah so on one hand I'm like I Ronan I, like when he finally showed up I'm like cool I was I was like where are you and then you're here but I'm like you could have been virtually anybody else so then it's almost like if you're going to have a character there I like the character to be serviced yeah for there like for there to be a reason. So it's just kind of cool interconnectedness. It is. Though. It like, is. So and I felt like Ronan was a better character in the two scenes he was in in this one than he was in Guardians of the Galaxy too, right? Like, yeah, no, but, no. Which is, it's the catch twenty two. It's something I liked but didn't like because yeah. I'm like, cool, you're here. I like that. I like seeing you, but I also, if you're there, I I like you. You're there for a reason. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, it kind of sucks for the actors, like Digimon Hansu or whatever. Is yeah, like, he's not a small actor. Like you think you can like use that time better for something else or but, like Idris Elba in yeah. the first in the Thor movies or yeah, yeah. the first two Thor movies in particular well, that's what happens when you sign up for one of these movies when you're not known and then you get known you're, you're still in yeah. the contract right so yeah but uh, yeah it's or, a, it, or in the, the case of Avengers or uh, X-Men they keep bringing you back so that they can paint you blue and make you uh, uh, as J Law's I'd, I'd be happy character. if she wasn't there anymore but she dies in the trailer she dies in the trailer and they confirmed it which is just makes no sense anywho yeah uh, so, I, like, do you have anything else on Captain Marvel? Um, yeah, it, it's also interesting. So the the Kree haven't really been in the movies much. No, but they've been a lot in TV shows. Agents of Shield really okay focuses on the Kree a ton. I'm way behind uh, on because Shield. if you know any of the you know, history of like the Inhumans, which the TV show is terrible and I don't think matters, but the Inhumans. Uh, not the main characters that you would know from the comics, but other Inhumans are in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. Right. Uh, their history is that the Kree visited Earth back millennia ago oh. and, invent, and, and uh, experimented on humans okay. and created Inhumans. That's talked about in the second season, or is it later? Because I know in the second season, when they um, uh, launch into the Inhumans thing. They talk about it sort of throughout, or whatever. Okay. But that, that's, even, that's the comic book history of it, right? Right, yeah. So the Kree show up several times in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and they talk about the history when they showed up in the past and there's a whole thing about how uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that S.H.I.E.L.D. had a Kree uh, corpse in, oh. in like storage that they were using the blood to do experiments with. So this would have been all like going on in the background as Nick Fury is you know a junior officer or whatever doesn't know about it yet kind right. of thing. And then that he uses it to uh, create Project Tahiti, which if you don't know what it is, you haven't watched the show, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but like, so there's there's it kind of is interesting. Like, I I like the the intricacy of it. You can sort of see like there's just layers of this organization of Shield that you just think of Nick Fury as the guy, but he's this young guy who didn't know a lot about it yet, and he has he's growing and becomes. I think he becomes the director because he saves Alexander Pierce's daughter or something in Bogota. They talk about that in. A winter Soldier or whatever so as he's yeah. kind of raising up he doesn't know about all these things that are going on but because of that experience that he had with Captain Marvel not only does that shape his desire to, to create the Avengers but he yeah. starts wanting to know more and more about these um, you know objects of unknown origin and yeah. and strange alien things and, and magic stuff which all shows up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. so it's it's uh, I don't know I just think they did a, a cool cool job with that stuff what I appreciate about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the movies don't care what happens in the show no but the people who make the shows and and I guess they must have for Captain Marvel they must have paid a little bit more attention but the people who make the shows have really tried to kind of work in with that and the best the best uh, example of that has been how the show linked up with Winter Soldier when that happened The two things overlapped, well, and they were complete stories on their own. But if you watch both, you got such a more intricate had, idea of it. Well, apparently, Shield had planned like this whole other arc. Yeah, and then, and then when change. a soldier was like, "We're doing this," yeah. So then they had to scrap. That's why the yeah. first like they launched ages. fourteen episode, fourteen or sixteen episodes are a very different show than the one you got. Well, and because they, they had s- to fill it because they're like, "Oh, crow!" Like, yeah, we, they weren't very good, right? No, they were kind of no. filler, spinning their wheels, and then. Once they got into Winter Soldier, they kind of hit the ground running. It was a much better yeah. show. So yeah, I, I like the the way that it it kind of filled in some well, gaps, even from Agents of Shield. I thought that was pretty. Cool and Agent, as well. Agents of Shield is is an, in an interesting spot because like the, all the Netflix shows and the other shows are connected, but they're like they're so low they're low neighborhood yeah. that I can just be like we can reference the world around us and show we're connected, but we're we're islands unto ourselves, and it makes sense. 
yeah. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's been treated as bigger. So then it's like, that's almost the one where it's like, we're connected, but we ignore you. Yeah. On the film side. Like the, yeah. the Netflix and soon to be the... If the Netflix shows do show up on the streaming, then they can still do that. Where it's like, hey, we're in Hell's Kitchen. Like, well, we can reference yeah. that the Avengers dropped an i like dropped a dropped an island. Yeah, but we don't have to like we get to be our own thing. Yeah, and and it's like so they're doing with the new Disney Plus streaming service. You know, Kevin Feige has said they're doing all those extra shows, Loki yeah. and whatever else. But they're like. Those ones are not going to be run by the Marvel Television Studios. They're, they're going to be they're going to be run by Kevin Feige oh, and Marvel man. Studios. So they're going to be legitimately interconnected. Yeah. And and like he said, like these are going to be much more tightly, closely tied than the previous stuff. So it makes me wonder, you know, Agents of Shield almost got canceled, and they kind of they're doing two more seasons in the summertime. And they're going to be hope. shorter. And so I wonder if they're going to have more control over that stuff, and also if the Netflix stuff does get continued, if they'll have more control. Yeah, like it makes more sense if they're going to do TV shows anyway. I really hope they do. Like yeah. there, there's for some reason been that almost standoff, uh, like of differences between the film and the TV. Yeah, and it'd be nice to see more of like that connectedness. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and like, how big of a payoff would it be for fans to see Coulson show up, but in and at like. Having Coulson and Captain Marvel made sense. Yeah. But if you haven't seen, if you haven't been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or anything, yep. you're like, Coulson died in yep. the first Avengers movie. Yep. Like, there would be a nice payoff, a nice re- like resonance to, say, in Endgame, have Coulson show up. Because mm-hmm. if you've been paying attention to all this stuff, you'd be like, oh, wow, like, yep. Cap, Tony, and them are going to be so thrilled. Because they don't know. Yeah. It's it's still on the down low. Yeah. But if you haven't, you're going to be like, what the heck is this dead guy doing Apparently, here? Apparently, uh, Clark Gregg, is that his name, who plays Agent Coulson? He, yeah. He's like jokingly pitching ideas. He's like, what if we had a show about just Agent Coulson walking around the neighborhood and accidentally bumping into Captain America at a deli? <laughs> How awkward would that be? <laughs> but and, and it's part of the reason that I like some of the stuff with, with Captain Marvel is... It really does, like, the stuff with the Kree has been such a big part of how he didn't die and came back yeah, to life. Yeah, So to have that in his history is just kind of neat. Um, that, that, that is a nice side. It appeals to my nerdy yeah. side. Um, the other thing I was thinking, I didn't realize that, you know, we, we've been talking about recently how Robert, Robert Downey Jr. with uh, Infinity War, he's tied with Hugh Jackman for the number of times yeah. he's played a role. He's going to surpass him with... I've heard, Endgame. I heard he signed on for more. Okay, well, so if he, so, if, but at Endgame he's going to be at ten, right? He's yeah. at nine right now, and he's going to beat Hugh Jackman. If Samuel L. Jackson's at Endgame, he's also going to be in Far From Home. He'll be tied for ten as well. Yeah, because he's been in a bunch of movies recently as yeah. well. I was thinking about that, and actually, I was thinking Chris Evans is only one behind them. He's, he, he'll yeah. be at nine with Endgame as well. Yeah. So, it's uh, these guys have played this role a lot. I know, and it's it's going to be interesting seeing what. The phases, because we, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, we, because we've addressed like wondering what phase three is going to be because four. phase four, yes, yeah, sorry. Because uh, a couple months ago, it seemed or it was officially announced like, hey, phase four is going to look a bit different because we, they were going to bank on Cosmic and Guardians and then James Gunn was fired. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about that. But then as of last Friday, they've announced that he is back. Now, from the sounds of the report, like, this has been planned for a while. Yeah. But it just, it was released, like, it, it they dropped Dime last Friday. I wonder if they, I wonder if James Gunn knew from the beginning, like, we're going to take you back. Just, I know, like, we like but we, face. yeah, exactly, like, wow. we have to, well, and from the sounds of it, like, Bob, I, I think Bob Iger commented on it, and he's like, I was really impressed by, like, how he handled it, because James Gunn, to his credit, did not once go, like, screw you, Disney, which yeah. I think fans, whether they like agreed with, what, like depending on how much they supported Gun, they were yeah. like, oh, he just "This left, was ridiculous." He, like, he just left that up to Drax. No, yeah, no, <laughs> Batista, yeah. Uh, which will be interesting to see if he comes back. Cause he I mean, burned a lot of bridges. He was mad. <laughs> he uh, was po'd. But here, so is, is is James Gunn directing? He is writing and directing Suicide Squad two, and he's directing Guardians three, and he's directing and has already written. Has Guardians already written Guardians. That's so crazy. So what's but. Like, Screen Junkies did an episode on it, and they pointed out something like, there has been no official release date. There wasn't a release date set for Guardians before. So, it's not going to be like you're waiting crazy long. 
because production on they're in they're well into pre-production on Suicide Squad 2 which sounds like it's a soft reboot yeah uh, and then then he can jump into Guardians 3 so Guardians 3 was still going to be two or three years away potentially yeah well I mean there's nothing so now it's, it's still for a year after Endgame right there's, wow oh, sorry, after after um, almost a year after Endgame the only exception would be Spider-Man yeah so there's nothing until the next May, I don't think. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. That's I might a be break. I might be wrong about that, but I think that's right. Like, there's going to be that same thing happened after after the original Avengers. The yeah, only thing we got true. was Iron Man three, and then there was nothing for a while. Uh, yeah, I know, Chris. <laughs> not, a, not a note. To um, take a break on. <laughs> so, like that. Yeah, it's, it's this is this is going to be the last hurrah of the original Avengers together as a team, yeah. and then and then you know the next next section or whatever. And so, it, but also this. What's the date today? Tomorrow, the Disney Fox deal is supposed to finish. Right? Yes. So when you well, guys hear this be, have gone next, over already. Yeah, yeah. By the time you guys hear this, the the Disney Fox deal goes through officially on Tuesday, March nineteenth, twentieth. Today's is, no, no. Yeah, today's the eighteenth. Sorry, it's, it's Wednesday then, the twentieth. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I heard the nineteenth. All oh. right. So over the next two days. Uh, one of those two, it will happen. So when you hear this, last week, Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. Um, so that yeah, that's like it's going to be interesting going forward, uh, seeing what we're what we're getting because you're getting the Black Widow movie. Uh, they have said the only person that they will keep on from the X Men franchise is Ryan Reynolds. So whether or not they'll keep Josh Brolin as Cable or not, that that'd be interesting because mm. he's always Thanos too. Yeah, because he's that's also true. Thanos. But K, like Deadpool two was very much, and the plan was like we we want to do X Force. Like yeah. even though they had their X Force gag in that, it was to set up X Force before Deadpool three. <clears throat> but I don't. I I mean I have to assume that that's going to be separate, right? And like it, it, I don't know if it will though, because like with him being who he is and that character having the potential to show up in PG thirteen, like are you like when you dangle that carrot of the money? potentially yeah. involved are they going to turn that down that's true i think it, well, I, so you think they're going to reboot or soft reboot or I just think, it's deadpool so they'll just make jokes about it and i think they do it i like to me the to what would make the most sense would be like deadpool when he does his movies they're small and are rated and you can have a field day of humor with that but when he shows up with if he shows up with an avenger or if he shows up in something like that like a cap man i hope he doesn't show up in any other movies which, but fair. I, I like yeah. the character more than you do. Or a Spider Man, for example. Like he's going to be PG thirteen, and yeah. there is e- that's easily done. Uh, and if you look, at, if you're someone who's looking at money, it's like, oh, if we have Deadpool show up in this movie, like that will it probably up our income. Yeah. Like you're you're going to do that. You have the ability. <sighs> I don't. Th- but they're looking at the cash cow that has been Deadpool as an R rated franchise. Because you can make it for substantially less, and it's making so much money. I don't think they're going to walk away from that either. Yeah. I mean, when characters show up in other characters' comics, it's similar. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. if you take that basis, I think you could do it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Last week was a big week for Marvel, just because you had the, the Avengers trailer drop with no notice, no publicity whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It was just suddenly like, what? Like... Best bathroom break I've ever taken at work. <laughs> <laughs> Those weird gray uniforms they have now. I know. Which uh, you're, it's curious. Are they? Is it yeah. a quantum thing? Or yeah. oh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so uh, quantum armor. Steve, this might be the last one we get to do with you for a little while. That's true. I'm having a baby. You are. Uh, so, dear listener, we uh, I would love to do a uh, Avengers thoughts with Steve. Uh, maybe that one will be over Skype or something. Yeah. Because uh, well. <laughs> right after. Oh wait. I'm just I'm trying to think. My baby's due May second. Avengers comes out the week before April that. April 26th. I yeah. probably shouldn't leave home. No. Oh yeah. No. That's, <laughs> that's why I'm like Skype. If anything, uh, so we we might not see you for a while, but yeah, we, we will miss you. And dear listener, if you can, please pray. Pray for Steve. Pray for his wife Becky for a smooth and safe delivery. Uh, the joke has been if uh, Becky goes into labor during Avengers, you will name your child Thanos. <laughs> She's not on board? No. All right, we got to try to get her no, on board. She's already been very generous with the name. <laughs> we're, we're, we have some good ideas. Uh, so we, we will miss you, but we're excited for you, man. Yeah. I'm, 
I'm excited for me too. Thanks. You should be. And we'll do it again. I'm, it'll happen. Oh, I know. I want to. Yeah, I want to talk about Spider-Man: Homecoming, and I want to talk about Endgame. And oh yeah. Uh, yeah, well, and that's the beauty. We will talk, but then we'll figure out a time for you guys to listen. So, dear and watch. So, dear listener and viewer, thank you for listening and watching. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let us know in the comments slash emails uh, what you thought of Captain Marvel. Uh, the reason I say comments slash emails is I have had to disable all commenting. On the website, spam has gotten ridiculous. It's just, I can't keep comments open. So drop us an email. There's an email form on that website. But if you're on Podbean, if you're seeing this on Facebook let us or Instagram, let us know in the comments. What did you think? Uh, did you come to the same conclusions we did? Uh, did you enjoy it? And what do you hope out of the sequel and also Endgame? Because that is right around the corner and I'm super stoked. April's, That's soon. That's soon. April's loaded though. There's Hellboy. There's... Shazam, and then Endgame. I didn't realize that Hellboy was going to be starring the guy from uh, uh, Stranger, Things, Stranger yeah. Things until I saw the preview, yeah. Which, I, I, I gotta say this, when we saw Captain Marvel, strangest trailer block I ever got, because we got the trailer for Frozen 2 <laughs> Disney and Age. Hellboy in this, uh, like, there was Godzilla in between, but I'm like, these I are just, not the same movies that you... Yeah. What? <laughs> I thought it was really funny that I was going to see Captain Marvel and there was a Shazam trailer during I Captain didn't get Marvel. the Shazam trailer. Oh, really? No, it's I would have like, loved it. Like, because it's... Captain Marvel. It's yeah, the yeah, history. Yeah. Uh, which, in the last podcast episode I posted, and I'll relink again uh, to the excellent articles Steve wrote about the long, interesting, complicated history of the legal rights to the name Captain Marvel. All that being said, dear listener, hope you enjoyed. If you enjoy what we do, feel free to hit us up on uh, coffee if you feel like you can financially donate to us. That would be awesome. Uh, oh, that's the donation website. Yes. Uh, or if you'd like to support, another way you can support us financially is you can hit up our Redbubble site and get some sick swag, some coffee cups, some shirts. There's a lot of stuff, and we get a portion of that. So if if you're wanting to do that, awesome. That All that being said, you guys support us just by listening, liking, and sharing. And thank you so much for that. It's It's been great. So with all that being said, hope you enjoyed this episode, and have a great day. God bless, guys. Take care. Peace. See ya.